So we're saying this is what's going on in the sun. So how do we do that here? We don't have, we, you know, the sun is too hot. We, uh, we, how do we do it? Right. So the sun has a massive advantage over us, which is that it's gigantic. Mm -hmm. So the sun just uses gravity yeah. and just pile on so much material and the temperature gets hotter and hotter and higher and higher pressure until fusion happens kind of effortlessly in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, on Earth, that's not really a strategy that we can do. So what we have to do is find other ways to create really high temperatures and densities um, of gas, which becomes a plasma um, when it gets hot enough, um, to do fusion. And the challenge of doing that on Earth is to hold the gas in a, in a place, the plasma in a, in, a, in a bottle, so to speak, mm -hmm. long enough for that to happen um, without it just touching the walls and dissipating away. Mm -hmm. So what, what are the, because, you know, we can't just do it in like a box or, or any old thing. What, what are some of these materials? Um, so there's two main ways of, of doing fusion, and both of them use a fuel that mixture that would basically be... Um, a mixture of hydrogen isotopes. So it's deuterium and tritium usually, which are just different numbers of neutrons in hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So that's the fuel. Um, and then the challenge is how you hold it. And there's two main approaches to doing that. So the first is takes advantage of the fact that when a gas gets ionized and becomes a plasma, it can get kind of stuck to magnetic field lines. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't like to go across the magnet magnetic field because when it, it it ionizes, so we've got just the nuclei, we've got charged particles, not right. no longer neutral. So and, and once they're charged, there's all these strong electromagnetic forces acting on them, and they just get stuck in magnetic fields, mm -hmm. and they don't like to move. So, so we're sort of like, it, they just kind of hover, and we, make, we use magnetism to make them kind of hover in a spot. Exactly. It's, okay. it's kind of like those levitating frog demos. Because it can't touch anything, right? If it touches right. stuff, it's so hot, it's going to just burn through any material that it would touch. Exactly. Okay. And so... Um, the first, so the first idea you might have is just to make a straight magnetic field and put the plasma in that and mm -hmm. let it fuse. But the problem is uh, the plasma is very quickly going to go out the ends of your magnetic field since mm -hmm. you can't make it infinitely long. Mm -hmm. So the, the next idea that scientists had, this is all happening back in like the 1950s and 60s. The next idea that scientists had was to wrap the magnetic field around in kind of like a donut shape or a mm -hmm. torus. A torus, yeah. And um, this is a configuration that's called a tokamak. Um, mm -hmm. And the idea there is that the plasma will just go around in circles and it gets stuck and you can wait for it to do a fusion. Mm -hmm. And it turns out to not be that simple because once the plasma gets to sitting around and realizes it can't go out, go out the ends, there's a bunch of different other mechanisms that still allow it to escape across the field. Oh, weird. Okay. So we think it's going to be in a circle and it's just almost like a particle accelerator kind of. Right. And it's, they're all going to just swim in there, but then they don't do that. They do, what do they do? So if you only have a few particles, they do that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why scientists were so optimistic initially that fusion was going to be pretty easy oh, because wow. this just seemed like it was going to work great. Mm -hmm. uh, but what ends up happening is you add more and more particles, it adds pressure um, and the particles start to kind of squirt across the magnetic field lines through these processes called diffusion processes. Mm -hmm. Um, and this, there's a whole zoo of these processes that have to do with particles interacting with each other or um, particles interacting with the magnetic field in, in nonlinear, complicated ways. And the, basically, the higher you increase the density, the closer you get to fusion conditions, the more these little problems start happening and you get little bits of the plasma squirting out and touching the walls. Okay. And then it just, then something gets set on fire and then the whole place is a mess. Or... So actually, no. And that's one of the nice things about fusion mm -hmm. as an energy source is um, when if you have what, what they call that's a, it's called a disruption, where the plasma gets out of control, mm -hmm. um, the plasma uh, is extremely hot, but it's also extremely low mass. So when it touches the walls, it just cools down really fast. Okay, okay. So this happens every day, lots of times in a lot of fusion labs. And all that happens is you lose your plasma and you're kind of done with fusion for that try. Okay, okay. So that's obviously a huge advantage over fission because all of the disasters that we may have heard of, of Chernobyl and all these things, nuclear fallout. What is nuclear fallout? What does that mean? Right. So the problem with a fission reactor is that you're basically building a bomb and then stopping it from blowing up. You're, <laughs> you're, you're slightly uh, decreasing the reaction rate so that it's stable. But you always have the potential um, that you have to try and control with your design. You have the potential for a catastrophic explosion or a meltdown, which is where the uranium actually melts and becomes very hard to contain. Um, and so that's always a possibility. We do a pretty good job of dealing with that with today's fu uh, fission power plants, but it's, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. With fusion, you don't have that problem. It's so darn difficult to do in the first place that um, it's very sensitive. And if any of the conditions are ever just not quite right, 
it, the whole process just fizzles out. It just stops working. Yeah. So you lose some energy at the moment, mm -hmm. but you're not going to blow up the power plant. So that's a very important thing for people to understand because I think be, because both of these processes can be categorized as nuclear energy and, right. or nuclear power, I think people have a tendency to group them together and just picture those, what are those, uh, uh, those the big smokes. Yeah. The, those things steam and, towers. and everything's going wrong and, and we're all going to die. But I think it's important for people to realize that this is not, they're just, they're, they're similar in that they are nuclear processes, but they are not. Date, we're not dealing with radioactive material. We're dealing with hydrogen nuclei. Right. Yeah. So, so a, a fusion power plant does create some mild radioactive materials. Mm -hmm. um, and it depends. Tritium. Yeah, there's the tritium, mm -hmm. which is radioactive. That's one of the fuels that you need in small amounts. And then there is some, when you're doing all these fusion reactions, you can create some radioactive materials on the inside of the chamber. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different schemes for dealing with that. Um, the main advantage is that there's a small amount of waste you're producing in a fusion plant. And the, the way that the radioactive material is created, it usually has a half-life of, you know, 50 to 100 years or something like that, mm -hmm. as opposed to nuclear waste from a fission power plant, which can be around for, you know, millennia. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's much more, it's not, a, you know, it's, it's not that, that fusion power plants are perfect in this respect, but the waste is a lot easier to handle. Yeah, many orders of magnitude safer and more practical. Right. And now my, oh, an interesting question is how many more, how many orders of magnitude more power? How much more power do we generate from, from fusion than fission? So in terms of just E equals MC squared, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more power. And you could like power a hundred times or like, how yeah, on, on the mm -hmm. order of hundreds or thousands, it depends exactly what metric you want right. to use, you know, like power per weight or right. something like that. Um, you're talking about something where you could potentially power a city the size of LA or New York for days on a gallon of, of fuel, a gallon of fuel. Like yeah. you go and get a gallon of gas. <laughs> E, e equals mc squared yeah. produces big numbers really quickly. It's true. Yeah, that c squared, that pesky c squared.